Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to replace a uh, an outlet, uh, an existing outlet. I got my helpers here with me today. There's one there and there's one over here underneath the table watching what's going on. They're gonna supervise, make sure I do it correctly. All right, but we're gonna change the outlet because this outlet here doesn't hold properly when you plug it in. When you plug a light fixture or anything into it, it kind of falls out. So we're gonna just replace this with a new one. The first thing I wanna say is make sure you turn your power supply off. When we turn the power supply off in the house, we need to have lights so we can see what we're doing. And the way that we can see what we're doing is we have this unit here. And this one is produced by a company called Up Ud Power. And this unit here is called a C500, which is one of their smaller units, but it actually works really well for the projects that I'm doing here. As you can see, you can charge multiple devices through here. You can charge up a, uh, through a USB. Uh, and any other kind of unit itself right here. Uh, it does have a uh, eco mode right here. We can charge the unit by plugging it into a regular household outlet, a regular um, outlet at home. But what I like about it is that if you press this here, you can see how much charge is in the battery pack itself. It's 98% and we have 48 watts being used right now and the 48 watts is because I have a very bright light that I'm using and it'll run for 4.5 hours on this, partic this particular light we run on here for 4.5 hours. It has multiple outlets so you can have additional power sources as well and this will come in extremely handy if you were to have a power outage and you lose power in your house at least you'll have some lights and you can see what's going on without having to pull out a generator, start it up, and then have to deal with running the cable into your home or the fumes from a generator. This also has lights right here as well. And you press it, and you can see it has lights on there as well. It has three different levels of lights. You have high, low, and medium. That's the highest right now. And as you can see, now it's drawing 50 watts of power because we're using these lights here as well. And it has an eco mode. I don't know if I told you that, but it has an eco mode. And you can also charge it from multiple sources. You can charge it by charging it in, a, uh, in your home, or you can even have it charged in your automobile, or you can even connect it up to a solar panel. All right, but uh, that's how I do it. I hear it all the time. It's like, how do you work without the power being on? And that's how we do it. All right, let's put that switch in and let's wrap this job up. All right, this is an example of what kind of tools you're gonna need. We're gonna need a regular flathead screwdriver, possibly a Phillips head screwdriver, and possibly a pair of needle nose pliers. But we'll see how it goes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna take off this cover right here. We're going to take out the Phillips head screws. And then we'll take our light, I mean our socket, and just pull it out just a little bit. Now you want to remember how the, uh, how the wiring bends because that's how you're going to put it back in. Now you do remember we made sure the power was supply was turned off. And when we put the receptacle back in, we're going to put it in exactly the way it came out. So we have the ground down on the bottom. So this is exactly how we're going to put it back in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off that wire right there. I'll turn it so you can see. Now sometimes these wires are a little bit tough to come off because you can see how it's closed, the loop is closed right here. So sometimes we'll need to open that loop up just a little bit just to get the wire to come off. Okay. Now what I would recommend if you've, never, if you've never done this before, do one wire at a time so you don't make a mistake. 
We're going to put this wire back on. Like this. We're going to pull it so that the wire fits all the way up in here. We're going to squeeze this together just a little bit. And now we'll tighten it up. Okay, so it's exactly as it was when it came off. We're going to do the same thing right over on this side here. We'll take this wire off here as well. We're going to open this up just a little bit so we can get it off. And we'll take this wire, bring it in over here, and put it back on where it came off. Again, we're going to take our needle nose pliers and we're going to squeeze the wires together to close that loop. And we're going to tighten it down. Nice and tight. We're just going to take this over this way a little bit. Get this out. And we're going to turn it. Now on this, let me turn so you can see. This is our ground wire right here. So we're going to take that one off next because that wire is a little bit shorter. So we're just going to take this one off. Again, we take our pliers and we just open it up just a little bit just to get it over the top of that screw. And we're going to put that wire back on later on because it gives us a little bit more room to turn it sideways here. I'm going to take these. Now you see how these are sticking out so far here? I don't like these wires sticking out that far, so we are going to shorten these just a little bit. Up a little bit. I'm going to take it off. Okay, now remember what I said about that wire being a little bit too long? Remember this one's a little longer? We're just going to snip off just a little bit of it. It's not really that important. We're just going to take a small piece off like that. And then we're going to reconnect it onto where we took it off. Same location that we took it off. See how that wire is bent in all the way close like that and it's not touching onto that little piece right there so now it's sitting flush and now we can tighten up the screw all the way down until it's tight and then we'll do the same thing on this one over here slightly to get it off. We are going to shorten it down just a little bit right here. Go over the top of the other and then we're going to squeeze this together just a little bit.
time, so now everything is tight. And as you can see, it's past that little plastic piece right here, so that the wire is totally um, underneath <coughs> that screw. Next thing we're going to do, okay, then we're going to take our ground and we're going to put our ground back on here. And I just want to point this out, that you see the loop on this wire here? You see how it goes around and down like this? When you tighten this screw up, or even these screws right here, you know, when, when you tighten it, you want to make sure that when you're rotating it in the clockwise position, that the opening part here is around this loop like that, so it actually pulls it in tighter. I'll show you what I mean. Let me get it on here first, and then I'll show you. I'm going to bend this up again. Okay, and then you just tighten the screw down. And that way, as it tightens up, it pulls it in a little bit tighter. Okay, so we're going to tighten that in. Nice and tight. And now we have the two screws here are tight, two screws here are tight. They went back in the exact same locations that they were on before. Now we're going to take our outlet and just push it back in the same way that the wires came out. We're going to push them back in. They're actually like a, like a bent to, to uh, fit into the receptacle. All right, now we're going to catch these screws here. I'm going to push it in a little tighter. We're just going to snug these down just till it touches the wall itself. We don't want to go too far. You just want to have the outlet touch into the wall to the, to the drywall. All right, and now if we have a screw down all the way like this, we're going to take our cover, we're going to put it back on like this. Put our screw back in there. And that's it. All right, so changing the receptacle is really not that bad. Main thing I want to tell you, make sure you have that power supply turned off before you touch anything inside the box itself. That's it, you're all done. All right, on to the next project. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.